So, all right, let's get started then. Uh, uh, Saloni, would you want to start uh, with your opening note and then we can uh, take it forward? Yeah, sure. Thank you, Joy. Um, so we all know that uh, digital transformation uh, plays a very, very important role in customer experience improvement. And uh, as an organization, all uh, in, you know, the businesses are are uh, doing a lot of uh, efforts, putting a lot of efforts and doing a lot of uh, investments to make the business uh, digital capable. And uh, um, uh, if I talk about, uh, you know, uh, my organization experience, I'm, I'm with Telecom and uh, we have a large uh, customer base and um, to contact us, um, you know, in, in conventional methods, customer used to call up the call center for any kind of, you know, uh, inquiry about the products or services or for any kind of issues they are facing. And we, we used to have a huge call center set up with us. And um, when you are calling the call center, it might be possible that, you know, the lines are engaged and you have to wait for some time for your turn and then you speak to the call center agent. Now, with the digital transformation, the same thing is available in our app. So it is it is on your fingertips, okay? So if customer don't need to go anywhere and uh, whenever they want to inquire about anything, um, you know, they can just open the app and they can get, you know, as much information as they want. If they want to register a complaint also, it is available over there. So, uh, you know, it is, uh, it is digital transformation is providing a very easy method to the customer to use our product and services. If I talk about the, you know, customer activation journey earlier, you know, customer was going to our stores or giving the papers, POI, POA, and the number gets activated after 24 hours. Now it's, it's, it's a two or three minute job. You just need to give your Aadhaar card. And we have an app which will read all the information from the Aadhaar card and number will be activated in, in five minutes. Recently, we have launched the WhatsApp, uh, you know, boss also. So all these digital initiative is creating a wow experience in a customer uh, life cycle. Thanks, Eloni. That was really insightful. Uh, makes a lot of sense uh, in terms of uh, the journey of uh, of Vodafone, you know, going from where you were to where we are. All right, moving forward, uh, Ashish, uh, uh, why don't you uh, uh, start with your keynote and then we can take it to the next panelists. Uh, thanks, Joy. I'll keep it uh, short. So uh, I have now been working uh, for uh, 10 years in uh, e-commerce in India across uh, Flipkart, Mintra, and now Swiggy. And uh, I've been, uh, I would say, one of the lucky few who've seen uh, and at least been at the uh, forefront of a lot of the transformations that we're talking about, especially for uh, uh, on, on at India scale, right? So uh, I look back at good times like bringing in a completely consumer-friendly uh, returns and refunds journey at Flipkart. And then basically setting that as the baseline expectation and seeing that happen. So I, I think it's exciting how far we have come in the last uh, 10 years uh, that I, I've been in this space. And I, I think the only thing that I've learned is, uh, is to keep pushing harder on customer experience because uh, once you do it, uh, it's, it's gonna be maybe a year or two uh, before that uh, becomes table stakes. And uh, you have to raise the bar uh, on a continuous basis around what uh, what is customer experience and what is allowing you as a company to provide a differentiated customer experience. Thanks, Ashish. Um, makes a lot of sense, uh, especially coming from uh, the you know the context of Swiggy and how today almost everyone is uh, Swiggy uh, is using Swiggy for uh, ordering their stuff. Uh, so definitely makes a lot of sense to uh, of what you say in terms of investing in customer journey. All right, uh, moving on to Rupesh, over to you. Uh, Rupesh, you are on mute. Uh, thanks, Joy. So. Uh... Uh, at Big Basket, uh, uh, I mean, it's no different from any other e-commerce in terms of uh, the importance of the customer experience. But uh, what we see is that uh, customer experience is uh, much more uh, holistic and much more personal at Big Basket. And when we look at customer experience, we look at each and every aspect of the touch points that we have with the customers. And we really put a lot of effort 
in ensuring that each and every aspect is uh, addressed in and to basically bring in that delight for the customers. So whether it, it is for the app and all the user interaction on the app or, or the web and each and every experience on the app and the way it is designed or whether it is about the product quality, the packaging and the cleanliness or the experience when the delivery person reaches your door and the way he greets and uh, the way he arranges the stuff or the customer service when, when you need to uh, have uh, any interaction with the customer service, which is assisted by bots or when it is uh, basically assisted by any human. So uh, each and every aspect really brings in uh, that aspect. And that's, uh, that's what we are really proud of. Basically, it, ours is a uh, sticky business where it's a repeat business where people need to come every, every month, every week to buy, uh, to buy their essential, buy their needs. So uh, we have to design our experience in a way that really brings in a lot of stickiness. Uh, with uh, BB Daily, uh, it's a daily business where the touch point is even daily. Every day you are getting those stuff. So it becomes very, very critical to design it in a way that really brings in that retention. Uh, and we're really proud of the fact that our NPS score is upwards of 60. So, which is really, really great. Thanks, Rupesh, and well done uh, on that. Uh, the last mile is really, like you said, the key, and even the simplest of things as, as to how uh, the BB guys, they just step in and greet you. Uh, that's really an amazing uh, thought process, and it's really good to uh, you know be on the receiving end of that as a user. So uh, moving on to the last uh, panelist, uh, Mohit, uh, over to you. Yeah, thanks, Shai. So, uh, you know, for us, uh, uh, because we are an offline uh, heavy business and, you know, an operations heavy business uh, in food and beverages or any other retail business, uh, knowing your customer was very tough. You know, five years back, nobody knew who their customers were. You walk into a, a cafe or a restaurant and you just transact and move out. So it was more transactional relationship with the customer. And there were no tools of getting back those customers or engaging with them on a next level. And, you know, this is something that we, we thought was, uh, was something that was required and missing as part of this offline retail uh, piece. And we started investing in and digitizing everything, you know, from the way our uh, cafes are uh, being, you know, uh, the operations part of it to the front side of, uh, you know, taking care of the entire ERP system ourselves, building it out all in house. And then, moving ahead and giving, you know, uh, interface to the customers, you know, you would have walked in into a Chayos cafe and you would see a screen out there, which asks, prompts you for your phone number. So, you know, in an offline setup, 95% of our transactions have OTP verified phone numbers. And then customers do engage with our loyalty program. And, you know, it's, it's one of the things that people are looking forward for uh, to engage with us. So to get to a level where we know who our customers are and because we are a high rotation, high repeat business, and you know, the USP of our product is customization. So offline setup, providing customization and that too in a food business was the biggest challenge that we had at our hand. And, you know, and then giving the same customer experience every time the customer comes back to us because of a high retention and repeat business, this it's a big, uh, you know, difficult problem. So we started investing in both consumer facing technologies you know, started building with a customer facing app, then build web based, uh, you know, ordering app. Now we have a Chaios ordering iOS and Android app. And then, you know, uh, all those have all loyalty program, uh, programs, you know, uh, the, the referral programs, the loyalty programs, the digital payments and all of it. And then we start working on our unique constructs of how can we now reduce the transaction times. So, so keeping in uh, uh, mind the entire touch point, each and every touch point of our customer during their journey at a Tayos cafe, we have optimized on each and every point using technology. And that's what has actually helped us in getting the leverage, you know, in terms of uh, knowing who our customers are and be being able to serve them better. And, you know, NPS, as we all know, is an industry standard. Uh, we are right now at a 72 NPS and, uh, you know, uh, this is, this is something which is, uh, and, and, uh, you know, which is something that, that we are very much proud of because we, in an FNB business where you have high repeat, you know, people transacting us with as high as 48 times in a year, 
it's a high business, high repeat business. And then to you sticking it to an NPS is, I would say a lot of it has to be uh, given to the way we have digitized the entire experience for our customers. That's amazing, uh, Mohit. It's uh, really good to see uh, how you uh, you guys have really thought about the whole user experience bit and you know completely digitized it for user convenience and uh, <clears throat> do make sure that uh, the users keep coming back. All right, uh, so let's uh, move on. Uh, I think uh, the first topic uh, that I would want to open up to this uh, panel is about uh, search. Uh, uh, when I was at Decathlon previously, I know that online search was one of the biggest source of uh, revenue uh, on the website, on the app, and it played a very crucial role in how easy it is uh, for uh, users to find uh, the products online. Uh, I'm sure uh, each one of you in your own uh, spaces uh, would have uh, similar challenges, and I would like to open with Rupesh and then obviously Saloni, Ashish, Mohit, please feel free to uh, chip in uh, uh, as to how, uh, how you have gone about uh, managing search on on your uh, uh, own platforms uh, to enable the customer journey. So Rupesh, over to you. Uh, thanks, Joy. So uh, needless to say, uh, I mean, search definitely is the most important uh, for bringing in any uh, new customer or even for existing customer. When, uh, as a customer, if I want to buy something, search is the gateway for that. Uh, so whether it is a search which is happening on a search engine like Google or any other search platform, or whether it is in product search on your website or on, on, on in the app, I think it plays a very, very important role. So I'll, I'll uh, focus, let's say more on the uh, in product search because that's where a lot of uh, control is with us. And that's where you have an opportunity to really delight the customer. So the focus is always on uh, providing the product that the customer desires in as quickly as possible. Uh, and, and we have done it in a, 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 a quite different ways. Uh, one is, let's say for the uh, existing customers, uh, most of the time as an existing customer, I buy things which are repeat. So there is a, a predefined uh, list which is created, which we call smart basket which is not a typical search, but it basically a list which is uh, curated for you based on your buying behavior, by, based on your buying history, and which is a ready-made list and you can just go and uh, just add things from there. And which is what I use and most of our customers use uh, based, uh, based on the data that we see, almost 40% of our customers use Smart Basket and just add things from there. So that really makes it very easy for people to just go and buy, uh, add things to the cart. Then coming to the search, I think, uh, I mean, search is needed everywhere, but what makes it really interesting for uh, grocery space or uh, fruits and vegetable space is that for everything, there are variety of names. Every article is known by different name in different uh, part of the country. So it, and, and, uh, so it becomes really important that all those names are, uh, all those local names are also kept along with the product. It also makes it very important that all the different variety of spelling, given that we are not a native English speaking country, people would make those kind of mistakes. So we have to address those kind of spell correction. We also need to keep it. Uh, so we also added voice search where you can just speak and then uh, the product will appear so that you don't have to type. And this makes it uh, very easy for people who either uh, don't type or, I mean, who, who basically it makes it very convenient for people uh, who want who want to use just the voice search. So, uh, uh, and, and obviously we do make use of all the um, I mean, ML and AI uh, to basically make the search much more relevant for the customer when, when they're searching. And I, I guess most of the uh, e-commerce uh, companies are using all of that. So uh, it becomes very important to keep those search result relevant and, and tie it with the clickstream data so that you know what products customer are clicking in and then feeding that back to the search algorithm so that the uh, products are always relevant and the search results 
are always relevant. So for us, it is, uh, it is uh, really, really important making sure that for uh, every category or every kind of search, the right facets or right filters are uh, coming up, uh, which are relevant and which make it easier for customers to uh, basically reach the product that, that they need. And, and, it, and we are continuously uh, working on that. It's, I mean, search is not an area where things are done. It's a continuous evolving thing where you continuously learn and, and evolve from there. Yes, uh, absolutely, Rupesh. It's something that is a, a continuous journey, and uh, for sure, uh, it is also like uh, you emphasize. It's a very, very critical part of the user journey. Uh, I would like uh, maybe Mohit to step in and you know uh, just talk about search a bit. So for us, you know, uh, search is because we you know we do not deal with uh, millions of products. We have a handful of menu items. So search is more about listing, and you know how smartly you can list. So we have built things like, you know, we have used user-based collaborative filtering, item-based collaborative filtering, market, bas market basket analysis, all these three algorithms put together and, and a hybridizer on top of it, which then basically helps us in ordering our uh, menu items in such a way. And we call it, uh, it's a dynamic uh, um, ordering or ordering of the items that we do because, you know, our in our app or the way customers look at our uh, menu, uh, the top five products or top 10 products are the ones that are getting picked up and they do not go through the entire menu. So it is important for us to give the relevant menu to the customer as well as, you know, uh, based on their preferences and the kind of behavior that they have shown in the past. So for us, these three algorithms, we hybridize them together and then put things like day part, you know, what gets sold best in breakfast, what gets sold best in the lunch part, and then come up with a dynamic menu uh, list, which then we show it to the customers and you know, we have seen that uh, uh, that these these three algorithms have worked. To, uh, you know, uh, I would say beautifully for us, and they help us in actually uh, uh, help us in actually serving the customer the right kind of product they are looking out for, rather than going through a cumbersome process of going through the entire menu or searching through for the products, showing them the upfront products upfront, along with uh, things like you know considering their previous history, previous search history, and uh, previous uh, order ordered. Uh, items and all, and what their likeliness to pick up this particular product would be, we actually come up with the with the dynamic, menu. and that's what the search part is more about for us. And you know, the smart recommend smart recommendation uh, engine that we have built for our customers, which is not just for the search. Makes sense, uh, uh, Mohit. Uh, before I go to Saloni, uh, maybe I can bring in Ashish here because obviously there's a lot of things going on inside the app of Swiggy and there's a lot of search happening. So uh, Ashish, uh, why don't you uh, help us uh, understand how do you go about managing it? Sure, I think uh, a lot of what Rupesh uh, said also applies to us, uh, but uh, there's a couple of things that are more, uh, uh, more pertinent for us. I think... Uh, the first one is our worldview also, and maybe that will also come in the later part of the talk. Uh, we look at search as a defect. Uh, we ideally should have uh, shown you the restaurant that you wanted uh, without having to search. Uh, and that's actually the goal of the other team, which is ranking and uh, homepage uh, teams. So they look at all of search as a defect. The search team obviously looks at uh, improving the experience for the customer who is uh, doing the search. Uh, I, I think the, the difference uh, for us tends to be two things. One is uh, just the hyper-local nature of things. So uh, the, the, all, of the con all of the catalog is not available for everybody. So the, before we do search, we need to do a bunch of availability checks and filtering and make sure that what are the restaurants uh, that can serve you. And then within that restaurant space, we do uh, additional search. Uh, just to give a sense, uh, the availability filtering in, is in the order of uh, something like 5 billion uh, calls a, a day, right? Uh, just to figure out what are the restaurants and uh, how do you actually serve, uh, have that ready for the search space as well as for the uh, uh, listing space. Uh, the other thing which is unique for us is to try to figure out uh, and we do, we almost operate on everything at two levels. One is restaurant level and the other is dish level. 
right? Because we're not dealing with standard SKUs across the across the marketplace. So uh, ginger tea is not the same across different uh, uh, restaurant partners who are providing ginger tea or even something as the most searched and most order item. Chicken biryani is not the same across uh, uh, all the restaurant partners, right? So we need to try to figure out uh, what is going on with the intent of the search. Uh, is it a brand name search? Is it a restaurant search? Is it a cuisine search, etc., which is all in the, the restaurant space. And then a whole bench of uh, search solutions around item level uh, searches, etc. And then at the item level space, how do we figure out what were you searching for when you uh, search for uh, something like a chicken biryani, etc. Thanks, Ashish. Saloni, you would like to add something to that? Uh, I think most of the things have been covered by Rupesh, Mohit, and Ashish. So uh, nothing as much. I think most of the company uh, uses search as a very, very powerful tool. So we also analyze the intent of the customer uh, when they when they when they lend to our page uh, for search. And accordingly, you know, uh, we uh, we display the kind of content which customers really wanted to look into. Um, uh, uh, otherwise, you know, uh, if, if the search result is not matching with the customer expectation, then it will not create a very, very positive image for your brand. So, so and in our industry, because telecom, uh, you know, you have a lot of products, a lot of offers. So, um, um, and we do a lot of changes. So for us, it is very important to monitor our, uh, you know, uh, website, like the updated product information is there or not. Um, so that's what we do very rigorously. And um, whatever the search result, uh, you know, uh, uh, the customer is finding out uh, the product. So those uh, information we display on the on the you know, front page. So that's how we do. So I think most of the things have been covered by others. Thanks, Eloni. All right. Uh, so uh, the next important topic I think uh, we have to also talk about is about digital payments. Uh, how, you know, uh, post 2017, uh, uh, more and more payments are becoming digital, less of a cash economy. Uh, and I'm sure each one of uh, you uh, have done uh, more and more or trying to do more and more options uh, uh, for the users. So I would like to start with uh, Mohit, uh, uh, maybe uh, just to uh, give, a, give us a bit more context of how uh, he and his team is going about uh, tackling uh, or uh, taking up the challenge of uh, uh, the digital payments. Sure. So uh, see, uh, digital payments, uh, you know, the way uh, if I divide the digital payments into two, one of them is basically an integrated digital payment where it is integrated with your system. So the reconciliation piece and managing those payments is an easy affair, you know, so for all the e-commerce players, it's more an integrated system where all the other than the COD, uh, you know, cash and delivery, all other payments are actually reconciled as soon as the transaction is completed. In an offline setup, these, you know, these static QR codes or the EDC machines, which do, which are not directly connected to the systems, they have an offline reconciliation process, which goes into months, you know, of reconciliation process and managing transactions one after the other. So the way we have looked at this whole problem is that, you know, we have tried to move all our digital payments out from these static modes to dynamic modes. And the same customer screen that I told you is deployed at the cafe has dynamic QR codes, which, you know, uh, which we have integrated with uh, players like Google Pay and Paytm. And, you know, those dynamic QR codes actually tie back to the transaction and there's no reconciliation process that is involved. It's, it's digitally reconciled and settled off uh, at the same time. Similarly, we, uh, we try to, because we are a high repeat business, our customers' expectation is that we provide them with a unique solution because, you know, every time, imagine every uh, day after the office or during the office hours, you're coming down and having a cup of chai and you have to stand in the queue, wait for the, your number to come in, make the payment, order your same chai again, and then wait for the order to come in. So we started working on a 15 seconds checkout process, which is the first time you come in, you register your face with the system and we tie your phone number with your face uh, using the facial recognition piece. And then you can top up your closed wallet, which is a chaias closed wallet with whatever amount you want to top up with. And the next time you come in, you just stand in front of the screen. We will recognize you. We will show you your last ordered and your, uh, you know, more, more susceptible orders that you can pick up. 
you select from them and you can check out without even doing any payments why because we have detected you through your face and we have now uh, detected the money from your wallet because there's no otp verification or anything that is required because you have done the face so it's a 15 seconds checkout process in an offline setup whereas a typical transaction would take somewhere around a 2 and a half minutes or 3 minutes so you know uh, uh, the queue management piece we, we are now able to work with only a single pos where we had three pos in place the queue management is in take in play, uh, has been taken care of all all the people are now getting migrated to app as well so 50% of our transactions are happening through our app so all these transformations which include things like closed wallets all digital payments being accepted uh, has made our lives as well as our finance teams lives very easy as well as it gives customer a fresh and a, you know the, the trip times have reduced drastically from spending an hour or a, uh, around 80 minutes in the cafe to now spending 20 minutes at the cafe so within 20 minutes if you are spending 10 minutes in the queue it does not make sense so you have we have to basically cut down at all that time so that customer can come in just spend let's say 30 seconds in ordering and can enjoy the cup of chai for the rest of the time so this digital payment piece that we spoke about you know through facial recognition has helped us a lot you know our customers are loving it they are loving the overall experience of it and uh, you know for us it's secure because it's a closed wallet thing Uh, you know we are we are we are working with the the facial recognition technology with dynamic uh, uh, mapping so that you know it cannot be tampered it's tampered proof so and and we are not storing any customers data so the customer also feels secure about it it's all about the counter mapping that we use for facial recognition and not store any image or uh, any photos of the customer and just the contours map which can which with which we can actually compare the customer's face and get the payments done so these are the innovations that we have done in uh, in the technology front created one more layer on top of what is existing out there to give a unique experience to our customers that sounds amazing moit really uh, i think uh, the whole idea of uh, doing the customer journey with facial recognition as well as the wallet 15 check in check out is really amazing especially for an offline store uh, all right uh, uh, maybe ashish if you could uh, help us understand <clears throat> sorry how do you uh, how do you manage to take care of the volumes of transaction and you know uh, how is digital payments really helping your customers uh, with swiggy uh, absolutely i think uh, i think we've been seeing uh, uh, the uptake of digital payments continue to rise uh, year on year uh, and uh, especially with certain inflection points uh, that happened uh, in 2017 and even last year uh, in fact for a brief period of time last year we had to even shut down cod uh, as an option because uh, we were trying to figure out how to handle cash safely right so i think we are very close uh, to uh, having a very good state of uh, payment infrastructure across the company uh, country but i think we we uh, still have some some bespoke solutions uh, for especially uh, relevant for very large merchants and is probably the same thing across all large merchants where we all op- obsess about uh, the metric of uh, payment success rate right so how much uh, how many transactions are we taking and how are we able to uh, get them to success on a continuous basis and we do a bunch of things around uh, that starting from uh, trying to route the route the transaction through the right payment gateway based on uh, based on some machine learning around figuring out what is uh, what is the best option for that uh, also things around failure detection there is blips that happen across many banks and many gateways etc so how do we solve for that uh, upi infrastructure stability and uh, and solving for that as well and uh, the other area that we focus on is try to give more options to customers so i think uh, apart from the basic payments i think we are trying to work on or we have been working on things like food cards for a long while but we are trying to go and see what else can we do to make the payments absolutely friction free so exploring areas where you probably uh, use pay later etc or even uh, we have a swiggy money which allows you to do it friction free so either pay ahead or pay later uh, instead of uh, paying at every transaction because okay. we just want to keep reducing the transaction level uh, thing the area that still continues to be a challenge in my opinion and 
like across the whole industry we need to continue to fix it is uh, the time that it takes to refund the customer right so when things go wrong uh, that's like a nightmare when it comes to customer experience and the the words to use uh, a lot of customers words to paraphrase it paise lete time instantly le liye but dete time 10 din kyun lag raha hai right and uh, like having to explain that is really difficult as our agents have to do it and having to continuously put in like i think probably 50% of our time is spent on refunding and 50% which is like less than 1% of our transactions but 50% of the team's time goes there and 50% of the team time goes in making the transaction itself uh, easier right so uh, rupesh i think uh, those are some very important points and i think uh, uh, it's very relevant for you as well which is the, the pay later uh, thing and uh, <clears throat> uh, and the refund part of it so uh, from a big basket point of view how do you manage all these situations so i i think uh, ashish has covered and touched those points very well it, and uh, everything that he said applies to us as well so coming to refund uh, i mean one thing that we have done differently is most of the times a refund uh, happens instantly to the customer's wallet which is a closed wallet for us it goes back to uh, the bp wallet and uh, only if a customer really wants that the refund should go to the source he uh, reaches out he or she would reach out to the customer care and then we would trigger the refund to the source and since it is a, a repeat business for most of the customers uh, people don't really mind the money going back to the wallet because they know that they will be able to use that money in the next transaction so uh, that way refund has not been that big a challenge uh, for us uh, and we have been able to manage that uh, i mean another thing uh, which uh, which we have seen uh, in recent time is during the covid time as uh, ashish touched about uh, we had also stopped cod and for a very long time i think till about last uh, uh, or till december uh, cod was not available on big basket we were avoiding uh, all uh, cash on delivery uh, and but we did not see any drop in the uh, number of orders or the number of transactions so, and i think that is uh, one thing that we have realized that customers have become much more convenient with the digital payment methods and uh, and they are very very well uh, very much comfortable uh, recently we have introduced uh, this uh, upi uh, payment on delivery so basically if the delivery guy when he comes he he basically has you know on his app we show the dynamic qr code and then the payment can be done so again the cod need where the new customers who basically rely on cod because of the trust factor for them this becomes a very convenient method that during the, at the time of delivery they they can make the payment either using the dynamic qr code or using their own app uh, just before the delivery just before uh, he delivers things to us so it's been uh, i think quite a experience uh, how uh, the customer behavior is changing related to the payments and how uh, india has uh, i mean moved so fast on the digital journey it's really amazing yeah absolutely and i think that brings us also to a very important point of you know personalization and recommendation uh, just an extension of uh, digital payments and uh, i'm sure all of you are really uh, uh, focused on this because it is something that nowadays is a bare minimum expectation uh, from uh, any of the our uh, users and customers so uh, uh, maybe ashish if you could help us understand how 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 does swiggy go about this and then we can open uh, it up for uh, more panelists uh, absolutely i think this is uh, one more area where uh, i would say uh, for some uh, people uh, uh, especially folks who have more supply uh, this is now table stakes right personalization and recommendations uh, i mean uh, we we're lucky uh, to have more and more options for our consumers and uh, whether it is content whether it is uh, commerce uh, we're just lucky to be able to provide so much more for our consumers the the problem then becomes essentially matching what the customer wants or needs uh, with uh, with the content or the Uh, items that we have so 
if you look at apps like uh, content fashion food like i think personalization and uh, recommendations are just must have but obviously with lesser and lesser uh, uh, skews uh, they become good to have they do make a difference over the long term uh, from a continuous customer experience but it's like not uh, not yet reached the must have so take an example of trying to buy a buy a mobile phone i think there are probably only 200 300 skus uh, across india so personalization not that important or like three skus on uber or ola right so between that it's not important but all of these companies still invest right so that you don't have to place that extra tap in choosing which ola do you want or which uber do you want uh, rather than even that is uh, personalized for you for us it goes across the whole journey whether it is uh, 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 whether it is before the purchase or after the purchase as well as it goes across all three uh, sides of the marketplace so we are a three sided marketplace we match consumers with uh, drivers and restaurant partners uh, driver partners and restaurant partners so all three sides of the marketplace we do personalization but obviously it's heavier on the consumer side because the consumers see millions of uh, uh, things that they can buy or at, at a hyper local level that's actually not millions but probably tens of thousands of things that they, that we can buy so like i said uh, for us it works at different levels uh, both uh, restaurant as well as dishes and also widgets so everything on the home page we're just starting to uh, customize the journey of figuring out uh, how do we personalize your home page when you come in whether it's because you came in for groceries or meat or uh, whether you're a health uh, uh, oriented person who's looking for healthy food etc so the home page itself will start becoming personalized but right now we do mostly the restaurants and uh, dishes um, i think uh, this area is generally a lot more commoditized and probably on the exponential curve when it comes to uh, machine learning advances etc Uh, and it's very easy to get to 80 90% uh, uh, in in general uh, but i think the remaining 10% is what is really difficult and uh, needs custom solutions uh, the other side of it uh, is uh, uh, also uh, what is of course the customer and like uh, mohit also mentioned right item item customer item customer customer etc mapping and personalized uh, recommendations based on that the second area is also understanding content uh, deeper so almost like a netflix uh, where they go deeper into understanding what is happening in each movie or pandora they have a bunch of people watching movies and annotating uh, them and putting different see, different emotions etc and then trying to uh, run recommendation algorithms like that at swiggy we are trying to do the same thing for food uh, so we are trying to understand uh, what uh, food it is what food is Uh, what kind of food is across multiple uh, restaurants and try to uh, build that kind of a taxonomy uh, across the area and uh, then uh, bubble up uh, and solve for some of the harder problems that we have so just to give an example of a hard problem is uh, if you search for chinese you'll get results which just don't make sense because we are matching them with uh, the chinese tag that we have for a restaurant but most sukh sagars also say we serve chinese right but people are not going to suksagar for chinese this the solving some of these harder problems need us to go deeper into the restaurant understand the menu understand each dish uh, what does it represent and then uh, tie that back and improve uh, our recommendations as well as uh, our search uh, and the third thing that we are personalizing on the consumer side is your journey right so because we are a high repeat high intent uh, high repeat platform right so a user uh, with high frequency actually comes to us uh, 50 to 100 times a year right so there's a lot that we know about them and there's a lot that they learn throughout their journey right so we have a customer life cycle management system which drives different mm-hmm. experiences for each customer as they progress in, in in their journey and we're trying to start experiments around tying this with uh, gamification etc and try to see how we can actually bring that out for the customer so for example on the track screen you can go and play a game and the rewards that you get are tied to where you are on the journey so if for example we see that you have never bought uh, groceries on uh, on swiggy 
then we'll uh, probably give you a deal which gives you an ability to try out groceries or the same goes for trying out breakfast etc right so where on the journey are you and how are we able to use that information uh, so these are all on the customer side on the front end there's a bunch of stuff on the back end like including just to give some examples including trying to figure out uh, which driver has been to your building before and if we have two drivers that we can send if one of them has been to your building before we send that person because they'll have a better sense of trying to figure out your address uh, and and deliver it without calling you as much etc and in fact we've even seen like it shaves off like a few minutes in the delivery time as well right so uh, a whole bunch of interventions even on the back end side of it uh, go into improving the customer uh, personalized customer experience so to say uh, i think on the driver side it's mostly uh, there are some just basic recommendations around geography that we do so obviously when a driver uh, needs to understand where to go to get an order right where is where are customers ordering from etc so we have heat maps uh, we have recommendations on those heat maps surges etc which are not exactly personalization but a lot more recommendation uh, for for the driver um, and also the personalization again is mostly on the journey side of it. so if we see that a driver has certain characteristics right so they are they maybe they actually had issues in delivering pizza before right so we'll then customize the training and give them different kinds of training based on uh, based on that kind of uh, performance or that kind of a, some other driver will be telling them about uh, maybe a different aspect of uh, delivery maybe it's about the softer skills of it etc so a lot of stuff is again we go through clms on the driver side and give different kinds of training different kinds of personalized incentives etc uh, happening on the driver side and on the restaurant side again it's similar uh, but in terms of personalization for the journey but here the journey is just much more about uh, much more about the growth so the most of the restaurant partners look for uh, business success and we try to personalize how they can grow faster by looking at all the data that we have across all the restaurants we have thanks ashish that was really exhaustive uh, and i just want to bring in saloni to uh, you know give us a bit of a different perspective uh, from a different uh, user journey uh, saloni how do you go about curating this kind of a user journey uh, okay i'll be very short uh, over here so uh, see uh, i'll talk about uh, two things one is the um, omni channel experience uh, we have a large customer base and our customer can contact us through any of the medium um, uh, via email uh, on social media by calling to the call center by walking into our stores so uh, we have uh, it's all about the customer journey so we have our uh, our uh, customer life cycle management system wherein uh, you know all the uh, you know transaction which which has been done with the customer is being recorded so so it's like a uh, customer doesn't feel that uh, you know uh, that that we are missing uh, any of the conversation any of the thread so it gives a a, a very a personalized experience to the customer and by doing that uh, you know involving ai and ml we have uh, we have designed our system in a way that uh, you know uh, if any customer walk into our store and um, if uh, it's a special day for that customer maybe it is uh, his or her birthday or anniversary then you know by putting the mobile number in the system we get a pop up okay a special pop up that it's a customer birthday today and then uh, you know there's a uh, the, that agent um, just switch on one alarm and everybody gets up on their seat and say happy birthday for that customer so this is kind of a personalization we we give to the customer which creates a wow impact for that customer um uh, so that is one thing um in fact you know if any customer is associated with us for a long time so maybe for a 10 years then um, we send a personalized greeting to that customer and uh, you know um uh, and 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 to value their association with us so that gives a uh a uh, a uh, 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 you know emotional touch to the customer the company uh, values their association with them 
So that is something which we do on personalization. Um, on recommendation, um, uh, we do a lot of segmentation. So we identify, uh, you know, we analyze the spend of the customer, their recharge tra trends, um, their billing history, their minutes of usage in terms of voice, data. And then we have a, a huge campaign management system, uh, okay, uh, which works on the AI and ML. And it gives us the output uh, whether customer is using the best fit offer or there is something else which is really good for the customer, but he or she is not aware. And accordingly, we pitch in that offer to the customer. So sometimes it is like when customer, uh, you know, comes to the touch point, we pitch in those kind of offers to uh, the customer. Or sometimes, uh, you know, we give a calling to the proactive calling to the customer. And then we, we give our recommendation. So in that way, you know, customer feels that you know, rather than spending, so the customer is taking different, different packs and all together he's paying uh, 500 rupees. But if I'm giving them a bundle pack for 450 rupees, it's a 50 rupees saving for the customer. So, you know, customer has a lot of trust on our brand and we, we provide this kind of recommendation. So that's what we do in our organization on, on, on this part. All right. Thanks. Uh, uh, thanks a lot, Saloni, for, uh, you know, uh, giving us those insights. Unfortunately, we are really uh, short of on time and uh, uh, Pooja is really pushing me to conclude. So I think uh, I just want to take this opportunity to thank all of you. It was really insightful. Uh, it gave us a lot of, uh, you know, uh, deep insights on how different companies are going about uh, uh, helping uh, uh, helping their customers as well as making sure that the cu uh, customer journey is uh, uh, is really well taken care of. So uh, with that note, I would uh, uh, just want to thank you all and uh, would uh, hand it over to Pooja and Anisha. Thank you, Anisha. Thank you, Anisha. Thank you, Anisha.